Questions with Sarah Hilfrand, take one. <laughs> Good. Tell us about your cat. My cat is the love of my life, my sweet little fur baby. Um, he's crazy, he's cuddly, he grounds me, he's my mental health cat, uh, absolutely keeps me going, uh, and is my best friend. All right, what's your coffee order? Okay, it has been an Americano, black, nothing in it, but now that I'm not cutting weight anymore, I've grown to a splash of almond milk, and hopefully that keeps growing until we end up at like full-blown frappuccino, whipped cream, out the top. So that's where I'm headed, I believe. My favorite wrestler? Hmm, okay, I, you know, it could be a cop-out, but Drew Hildebrandt, he's a pretty cool wrestler. Uh, I also really love Clarissa Chun, she's been a huge part of my journey and she just has always, always inspired me in each phase of her career. Most tired you've ever been in a match? Okay, actually very clearly know what match this is. It was my very first time down at 50 kilograms. I overdid the weight cut, like weighed in, way too small. I was wrestling Victoria Anthony and she's a scrapper. We're overseas in Italy, and we just had a crazy barn burner match, and I literally thought I was going to die. I was like, after the match, I somehow won, don't know how. I could not breathe. I had another match in like 15 minutes. Didn't have a plan just to stay in my stance. Didn't take one shot the next match. Like, I seriously thought I was going to die in that match. I can't believe I actually won. All right, what percentage of time in your day are you thinking about wrestling? <laughs> This is embarrassing. Oh my gosh, too much. Probably like, probably like 80% because everything I do is like fueling my wrestling. So like everything I'm eating, every little bit of rest, uh, then just naturally you think about wrestling. If you're trying to watch TV, usually in action movies, there's always wrestling happening. I mean, just literally anything kind of makes me think of wrestling. So probably in the like 80, 85% range, then the rest is like, I'm reading a book or you know, hopefully I'm focused when my boyfriend's talking to me. <laughs> Biggest heartbreak. Ooh, the Olympics in 2021 was pretty heartbreaking for me. Um, that sucked. I think I was pretty blindsided. I had to make a lot of changes after that. Um, but I had a lot of like little heartbreaks through the 2021 to 2023 time, just like as I was trying to find how I wanted to do wrestling and find myself in it, it was really hard to depart from certain things and to trust myself. And there's just, there's little heartbreaks all within there. What's in your headphones? Sweat, no. <laughs> um, I love all sorts of music. Um, you know, rock music, pop music. Right now it's a lot of Chapel Roan, Taylor Swift, pretty much 97% of the time though. Um, yeah, it kind of drives people crazy. I feel like I'm listening to Taylor Swift all of the time. <laughs> but she keeps pumping out new stuff. Like you just don't get sick of it. How has your relationship with the sport evolved from when you started to where you are now? This has been everything. Uh, when I started, I was, you know, just trying to find my footing. Like I was just a deer in headlights, the only girl on the wrestling team. It slowly evolved into being super obsessive, super mechanical, so, so, so disciplined that I lost myself entirely. Uh, and it was hard to depart from that because we get praised for that discipline and it yielded some success, success that was, you know, people could be satisfied with, I could be proud of, I was proud of. Um, but really I knew that if I was gonna go the next level to get that gold medal, or even just to be happy with my career, I was gonna have to depart from that and just step into this, evolve to this total, you know, just embodying my values, believing in that, calling the shots. Um, and that's really what this last, last quad has been and this last year especially just, kind of leaving that discipline behind and trusting myself entirely. Um, that's really what it is and, and enjoying myself. Um, 
If you had a signature move named after you, what would it be called? Um, something to do maybe with like smiling or something with flowers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> something totally vibey or maybe it would just be vibes. <laughs> like hit the vibes. <laughs> That's actually perfect. What do people misunderstand about wrestling? Uh, I think they think it's like, I don't know, for me, wrestling is so artsy and creative and dancing and working with my opponent. Like, I think you, they think it's this, and it is, it's a fight. Like, I don't want to take that away. Like, maybe I romanticize it a little too much, but it's really this effort about like working with your opponent and all these external things and yourself and your mind. And I just really think it's really cool because you know, the better your opponent, the better that dance becomes and you have to work more with, with them. And I don't know, I just don't think it's as counter as people think it is. It's not this like, you know, just running into somebody else. It's like, how can I work with this person? It's not just straight up manipulation. It's, it's like a dance. So I think people misunderstand that a lot. And we're also not just like crazy evil. We're just straight up crazy, actually, that's true. <laughs> what do you do to calm down before a match? Uh, I love dancing. Um, just put on some vibey music, hop around, I dance. I probably get like 60,000 steps in on competition day. <laughs> uh, but if I do feel like things are getting too haywired, I'm too pumped up, I'm too already wrestling the match in front of me. Uh, I, I just wanna make eye contact with my brother, with my coaches, just look them straight in the eyes, have somebody put their hand on my shoulder, bring me back to the present moment. Uh, that really kind of calms me down instead of just getting so tied up in the future and trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, so eye contact really helps, that's something I've discovered. If you were a color, what color would you be? This is a tricky one. Like, I feel like my favorite color might be purple, but I don't feel like I'm a purple girl. So I feel like I like sparkles. <laughs> is that a color? <laughs> Somewhere like that, like something, I don't even know how to describe a color, but it does this. <laughs> it moves. It's like a lava lamp, actually just lava lamp. How has your mindset on wrestling changed from when you started to where you are now? Um, yeah, I used to just be, like, my, the beginning of my senior career, I was just too serious. Everything was results-oriented. I was so obsessed, so disciplined. I lost all essence of Sarah, and I had to bring that back. I knew that to be more successful, I didn't have to be a better wrestler. I had to be more human. I had to figure out who I was. And it was cool to kind of believe in that mindset and and shift into that uh, to really discover who I am. And, and you know, ultimately it led to success as well. What's your favorite cereal? Ooh, I don't know, I haven't had cereal in so long. But this might sound boring, but I love honey bunches of oats. Like, I want something crunchy. But, you know, I get down with some cinnamon toast crunch, a little CTC, that goes hard. Have you ever been starstruck? Yeah, I feel like always. <laughs> uh, just seriously, anybody. When I met Kale Sanderson, I was like actually so excited. I was, went up to go take a picture with him. I was just a little kid. I dropped my phone, my camera broke, and he's like waiting for the photo, and I just like stared at him and turned and walked away. I was pretty starstruck. <laughs> if you were a movie or TV character, who would you be? Oh, can I do book character? There is this character in... The Name of the Wind, her name's Ari, and she's got crazy long hair, and she runs barefoot on roofs, and she's like kind of dirty, and <laughs> doesn't take showers, and just like a little strange. I feel like absolutely that's who I would be, that's who I wanna be, like let me just run barefoot with dirty hair blowing in the wind, that sounds awesome. Do you have any wrestling pet peeves? Um, okay, I don't know if this is a pet peeve, but it's a hill I'm willing to die on. Everyone's obsessed with the staggered stance, and I'm just like, square stance girl, let's go. Everyone constantly raving on these square stance, and their feet are all narrow, they're gonna get ankle picked. <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit of a pet peeve. 
I don't know. Uh, or I guess within that same breath, like people not valuing how important stance is and you know, just letting that evolve with their wrestling. We like work on it once when we're in fifth grade and then just abandon it forever. But also square stance. Square stance, kids. <laughs> What's the best advice you've ever received? Hmm. I think just trusting myself. Like seriously, just trust yourself. Instead of, even if you're wrong, you'll be better off just believing in what you're doing than constantly seeking this like magic sauce from something else, someone else, somewhere else. You know, I often just, it's tempting to want to compare yourself to everything around you and you see somebody else doing something, just trust yourself. Like literally, you are the captain, believe in that, trust in that, and I truly think you cannot go wrong. Like trust, trust, like that is, that is absolutely great advice. What's next? The golden question. I don't know. I'm excited to step into complete unknown, you know? Like, I'm not controlled by the calendar. I'm not controlled by a weight cut or practices. Like, what do I feel like doing and kind of following that for a little? Um, but I do think I'm about to step into a really big period of reflection. I think it's necessary. I want to pump the brakes on everything, just turn inward and and reflect and process and then see where, what that opens up and what my heart calls to after that. Thank you. <laughs> Whoa. Was that about right? I was not too long-winded. 